The best things in life come in threes. The Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, French hens at Christmas, and the number of times I've fought people at The Chemist this week. But the big three refers to the three most popular shonen series of the mid-2000s, Naruto, Bleach, and One Piece. I've always enjoyed Naruto. I was hooked as soon as I watched the tuning exams, and I'm currently making my way through the Bleach anime. And let me just say, the music is on another level. The series I definitely have the least exposure to is One Piece, but I've always been interested in the world, story and characters of Eiichiro Oda's magnum opus. In my experience, the right game can be the perfect gateway to a series if you don't have enough time to watch the anime or read the manga. I got into Naruto through Storm 2, so I thought finding the right One Piece game could kickstart my interest in the series. One Piece World Seeker released in 2019, and I thought the trailers for the game looked great. I started it back in 2020, but I had to put it back down because my Skyrim habit picked up again while I was at university. So I thought I'd try it again. I think it'll be interesting to approach this game as someone without much exposure to the overall series. Before jumping into the game itself, I thought it would be useful to go through my existing experience with One Piece. I decided to try and get into One Piece back in 2019. I got through the first 90 episodes and I enjoyed what I watched, but I had other commitments that got in the way of my pirate binge, like A-levels and drinking. Going by the anime episode count, I got through less than 10% of the entire story, including filler. Just for clarity, the last thing I remember is a scene of Crocodile fighting people for the first time. I do know other things about the series though, either through talking to friends who are already fans, or just reading up about the new developments online. So I already know about Marineford, Haki, Luffy's Gears, and the rest of the Straw Hat crew up to Jinbei. So sit back and relax for the scissor reel of my major One Piece knowledge. So naturally, the best way for me to understand the series is to play a non-canon spin-off game that contributes absolutely nothing to the actual story. I do want to catch up with the series before we actually find out what the One Piece is, because I think that afterwards I won't be able to experience the story in the same way, but right now I'm watching the Bleach anime, filler and all, because I hate myself. So I don't know whether to juggle the two anime or just jump head first into the One Piece manga. If you know One Piece, let me know. And now onto the actual game itself. Do what you want, cause a pirate is free. You are a pirate. Your heart fiddle did deed. Being a pirate is a wretched thing. Do what you want, cause a pirate is free. You are a pirate. World Seeker was developed by Gambarion Games, a developer with previous experience with One Piece games, having developed games including One Piece Grand Adventure and One Piece Unlimited World Red before World Seeker. Some other games they've developed include Dragon Ball Fusions in 2016 and Jump Ultimate Stars in 2006. World Seeker was first announced on November 2nd, 2017, under the codename Dawn, with the title of World Seeker being revealed in December of the same year. The first trailer was shown at Jump Fester in 2018, showing Luffy traversing a large world, fighting enemies, and doing his best solid snake impression. After releasing on March 14th, 2019, the game was met with largely mixed reviews, with some players absolutely loving the story but lamenting the repetitive gameplay, underpopulated world, and shallow quest design. The game is definitely targeted at existing One Piece fans, and idiots like me who will play it anyway. The game begins with Luffy being escorted through a prison while the rest of the Straw Hat pirates break into a vault, only to find that it's empty. Luffy tussles with the prison's warden, Isaac, and falls off the prison. First of all, I love Isaac's design. I think it fits really well with the aesthetic of the One Piece world. I appreciate when a spin-off or movie will go out of its way to make a non-canon character fit within the world, unlike some other series. Upon landing on the island below the prison, Luffy meets Jean, the current leader of the island. The cutscene of their meeting devolves into silent text backed by static models. This bodes well for the rest of our character interactions. We learn that Chopper's being held captive in a nearby naval base and we go to save him, after which we go to make sure the thousand Sunny is safe. It's during this opening section that we get to grips with the core mechanics of the game. You can use two different hacky types, observation and armament, to fight your enemies. Observation mode gives you quicker attacks, stealth takedowns and a dodge but Armament Haki gives you a larger area of effect, more damage, and better defences. I pretty much used Armament Haki for my entire playthrough because you tend to get swarmed by a ton of enemies. In terms of progression, Luffy has a skill tree where you can spend points to unlock new abilities, a larger health bar, and better drop rates for materials. Due to the sheer size of the world, you need some way of getting around, so Luffy can launch himself from perches and saw through the air. It looks better than it is, to be honest. Sometimes the traversal system just doesn't want to work and it's really fun when you're being hit by snipers across town when you just want to get to a side quest. 
The world itself looks brilliant. I think the One Piece characters fit well within the world and all the effects look good too. I played the PS4 game on PS5 and didn't notice any big issues. There was the odd frame drop every now and then, but I didn't find anything to ruin the experience. But while an open world One Piece game is an interesting concept, World Seeker's environments are pretty underwhelming, with areas only being populated by the odd NPC or two and some materials to collect. Plus, half the time the game is just void of music. The game has a soundtrack, but a lot of the time you're just wandering around in silence with your own thoughts. Back to the story, it turns out that all the Straw Hat Pirates were separated after the heist at Sky Prison went sideways. So Luffy goes to investigate the claims of a Devil Fruit user being spotted on the island. After investigating, it turns out that Smoker's on the island and tries to capture Luffy. A few Red Hawks later, we're able to say no to Smoking, and we set out on the quest to find the rest of the crew. We find Nami after investigating claims of a woman trying to sneak into a naval base. Sanji comes running as soon as he sees John. We find Zoro fighting Isaac outside the prison that Robin's being held in. It's at this point we're introduced to the worst enemy in the entire game, Isaac's robots. They fly way too fast for you to aim at, the aiming in the game isn't very good, and they just take two hits and then they get invincibility frames. Before we're able to free Robin, we're stopped by Toshigi. And we find Robin. We find Usopp in the mining town, where we need to mine for some gems to pay for his tools. Mining away. I don't know what to mine, I'll mine this anyway. There are rumours of a ghost haunting the graveyard, and it turns out that Brooke is hiding there to avoid scaring the islanders, and finally Frankie is kept in an underwater prison which has the worst lighting in the entire game. But now we finally have all the Straw Hats together, I can't wait to go on this adventure with the entire crew and to have them contribute to the overall story progression. While the Straw Hats make time to prep for setting sail again, Luffy offers to help Jean with problems across the island, and the problems start with the nearby town being attacked by robots. Communist detected on American soil, lethal force engaged. Jean is saved by Isaac, and we learn that they're siblings. Jean tells us about her family and the island's past. Her mother was the previous leader of the island, and she died trying to protect the treasure of the islands, the Dynastones. The Dynastones are valuable ores with enough power to rival the ancient weapons. They can be excavated from the island, but it's the duty of the island's leader to keep the method behind extracting the stones a secret. Isaac joined the navy shortly after their mother's death, and now he and Jean don't talk much. Wonder who can relate to that? So now we begin helping the people of the island through side quests. The naval occupation has split the islanders into two factions, pro-navy and anti-navy. The first quest we take on involves a family at odds over this issue. A pro-navy man called Fred has gone missing and his anti-navy family don't care. It turns out that he's been carrying packages for pirates pretending to be marines to take advantage of his blind trust in the navy. I love how this pirate's name changes to Deceitful Merlin when we fight him just to make sure that we know he's up to no good. We save Fred and everyone comes to the realisation that their disagreement over the navy blinded them to what was really important. This was a pretty interesting storyline that I wasn't expecting from a non-canon spin-off. I wonder what the other quests for this section will be. It turns out that all of the quests follow a very similar formula. We go to location A, talk to someone, turns out someone else is in danger due to a disagreement of the navy, we go to location B, fight someone and everyone's happy again. Or the other structure that World Seeker is also fond of, fetch quests. That's right, the majority of the quests in this game are just mindless fetch quests. Did you think you'd be playing as Luffy fighting pirates and saving the day? No. Spend an hour looking for a fucking beetle because Jono over here can't look for himself because of reasons. The shallow quest design makes me think that while a lot of time was spent developing the narrative in the world, there wasn't as much effort put into coming up what to populate the world with. The only fetch quest I actually enjoyed was having to find Zoro because he's terrible with directions. So we ask for the same directions the islanders gave him and we have to go in the exact opposite direction to find him. I just thought that was kind of funny. While doing the side quests, we find some other characters that have turned up on the island, like Kuzan, Kizaru, Gemma66 and Buggy. But it feels like they're just included for the sake of fan service. they don't really contribute much to the plot of the game, which is kind of disappointing. After spending about two hours helping the people of the island, we come back to the plaza to greet them and we learn that an admiral has come to the island. At first I thought it was a Kainu, but it's Fujitara, and we get access to Gear 4. There's no build up, no reason why we couldn't use it earlier in the game, it's just here. Why are you giving me steroids? Eh, it's Thursday. So after fighting Fujitara, he cements himself as my favourite admiral, because he stops the fight and says that he feels something's wrong on the island and he needs to find out what's going on. He straight up tells Luffy not to worry about him while he's on the island. The boss fights with established characters like Smoker and the admirals are cool, but the problem I have is that they feel really underwhelming. They're pretty easy to take down and the real challenge comes from being mobbed by tons of lower level enemies, because they're all damage sponges and you can get juggled between close range attacks and shots from snipers. This game makes Luffy feel weak and it's really disappointing, because I think at some level all anime games need to be a bit of a power fantasy to let you recreate the ludicrous feats from the series. There were several points during the game where I found enemies who could tank multiple moves in a row. 
I ended up playing hide and seek with one guy just for him to snipe me as I was running away. Back in the story, Sabo appears on the island. And while he and Luffy catch up, Jean is captured by Luchi working for the world government. Luffy is able to free Jean from the angry cheetah man, and we learn that Isaac's been excavating the island's dinosaurs for the world government. But he betrays them at the last minute. The secret ingredient is crime. Isaac reveals to Jean that he only came back to the island to use the stones to wipe out everyone who had a hand in their mother's death, so he's just going to blow up the entire island. After hearing that the dinosaurs were used to destroy several naval bases, Akainu heads for the island. We return to Sapphire Town, and Sabo tells us that there's a commotion in the plaza, even though he's one of the only three people stood in town. Someone from the pro-navy faction shot someone from the anti-navy faction, so naturally the island descends into war. Jean tries to calm the situation, but the islanders ignore her, telling her that her mother would know what to do. Defeated, Jean heads for the graveyard, and we actually get a really good scene of Luffy inspiring her to carry on. If there were more cutscenes like this in the game, the story would feel a bit more substantial, instead of having everything delivered through text. While this scene is very similar to Luffy and Nami's interaction in Arlong Park, I'll take what I can get at this point. Jean's plan to stop the Warring Islanders is to hijack the radio tower and give them a message. To do this, she needs all the Straw Hat Pirates to help, so they're finally getting involved with the plot, and they contribute to the plan… off screen. This entire game has just been Luffy running around doing fetch quests. You don't feel like you have a pirate crew, they only exist to gather items for you. And Usopp and Frankie are just glorified crafting menus. It's a Luffy game, not a One Piece game. Somehow, John's plan works, and everyone gathers in Emery Plaza to talk it out. But she's confronted by Isaac, who needs the island to be at war to distract the navy long enough for him to kill everyone. So he traps Jean in a robot suit in an attempt to make her start the war herself. We weren't able to capture Isaac before he escaped, but we were able to free Jean. And here we enter the final act of the game. We need to go punch Isaac in the head until he submits, but before we can do that, we need to travel to 9 locations across the map to save the islanders from robots. This is single-handedly the worst quest in the entire game and it kills all of the momentum. The only reason it exists is to extend the game's playtime and nothing more. After smashing the robots, we have a plan to get to Sky Island. Luffy and Jean are going to fire themselves into the air using a cannon on top of the island's gem mine. And on our way to the cannon, Luffy is confronted by Akainu. After another easy boss fight, Sabo steps in to give Luffy a chance to escape, and we find the rest of the crew around the corner. Thanks for helping me fight the man made out of literal magma. We fire ourselves into the sky, and the Straw Hats protect Luffy and Jean from the robots, finally contributing at the end of the story. If you get someone out of the water after they've drowned, they've still drowned. And we're finally here, Sky Prison. Isaac ditches his really cool design for another generic robot suit. Oh, wait, it's, it's blue. That changes everything. We spend about 5 minutes swinging away at Isaac while he avoids all of our attacks. I'm really glad they decided to animate a cutscene to be played mid-fight just to make sure that we know he's kicking our shit in. After a little more time passes, Luffy is finally able to hit Isaac. How is he able to do this? I don't know. I guess it's a secret. Isaac eventually gets into a bigger robot suit, so that way you know he's stronger. And the fight feels exactly the same as all the other bosses. After beating Isaac, he comes to his senses, which is convenient. He throws Luffy off the prison, sends Jean to safety, and moves the prison away from the island before blowing it up. But everyone's still in danger, and Fujitora steps in to remind Akainu that they need to save the island, once again proving that he's the best admiral. Never fear, citizen, unnamed islander number four has come to the rescue. Once everyone's safe, Jean thanks Luffy for everything he's done for the island. Luffy says he'll come back to visit, that was a lie, and the Straw Hats set sail once again. Overall, the game wasn't terrible, it just feels like most of the effort went into the story, animations and world design. These are all good aspects of the game, but everything else like the character interactions, combat and quest design all feel shallow in comparison, which leads to somewhat of a lopsided experience. While I do want to get into One Piece as a series, I don't think World Seeker is the right way to get into it. 